The dawn of the tertiary era, 400 million years ago, and the dinosaurs have disappeared from the face of the earth. Smaller species have survived ever since, many of them armed with this secret weapon, silk. Inside this stomach is a factory of glands that secrete liquid silk from proteins. Then, as the liquid emerges from weaving cones, it solidifies into a thread. Finer than a hair and ten times stronger than steel. Silk comes in many different styles. Frizzy, which is ideal for thermal insulation, and elastic to withstand shock. Dry silk for transmitting vibrations and silk covered with sticky pearls to catch prey. No other substance has so many uses. Queen of the lace industry is the spider. Its geometric web is a great classic of the natural world, an intricate and precise patchwork of mesh that creates a deadly net. Webs have different shapes and sizes and are spun by weavers less well known than spiders. Each has its own function. But all these architectural wonders share one principal purpose, protection. Take the simplest of all prototypes, the abseiling rope. Fold him. With the coast now clear, the geometric caterpillar can return to its chores. Braided silk is dark enough to cloak secrets and protect treasures. Under the lens of a microscope, the cocoon of silk is a tangled network of knots. Under such blanket protection, a metamorphosis can be a tranquil experience. The next most important use of silk is as a weapon to trap prey. The thread of life becomes a hangman's noose. But silk has a third crucial and lesser known function. It's a tool of communication in two senses, transport and exchange. The high wire is a welcome shortcut across the void. And when two acrobats meet, they exchange information essential for the survival of the species. Exchange creates social links. It builds communities where silk may be used collectively. And this is the spark. Each one for himself, but silk for all. Now that's intelligent. Take the ingenious cave-dwelling glowworm living at the bottom of dark caves in Tasmania. It survives thanks to a treasure trove of crystal traps.
These larvae sport blue lanterns at the tip of their bodies. Glowworms live in colonies, and under each one hangs a precious pendulum of pearls. Up close, there's nothing magical about these jewels. They're viscous silk threads, which the worm produces for a strategic reason. They're only found in these damp caves, visited from time to time by passing midges. Their first task is to build a hammock and to cover themselves with mucus to stay hydrated. Secure in their harness, the worms begin secreting sticky fishing lines. The blue light mirrored on these pearls is scintillating and the midges can't resist. It's the same effect as light reflected off the surface of optical fiber. The combination of light and silk sends a misleading message to the midges. They fly blindly into this starry, deadly night. This glowworm may have waited weeks for a bite. Now vibrations on its web signal a catch. Once fed, the larva has the strength to begin metamorphosing into a fly. Its sole vocation now is to reproduce, if it succeeds, that is, in escaping this forest of glue. Every worm ardently defends its own patch. Paradoxically, this territorial instinct is a form of cooperation. By shoving each other aside, the worms ensure that every inch of their hunting ground is covered. 